Have you ever wondered what things you can do to help fix your computer easier later? Well, that's what we're going to discuss today on this episode of Jams on IT. So Windows has a few great features that are built into it to allow you to recover your computer in the case of a virus or if someone accidentally deletes something or even things happening where you just get corruption and you need to fix a problem that your computer is having. Maybe you installed a program and it's not working right. You want to remove that program more easily than just uninstalling it or more thoroughly, I should say. Let's take a look and see some examples of what you can do now that'll help you fix your computer more easily later. Let's jump in our computer. So as you can see here, I've got a standard Windows 11 computer and this works on even back in Windows 7 and even XP has some of these features. So feel free to tinker with your version of Windows, but any modern operating system has a recovery system. So if we just type in recovery, you'll see there's a recovery options section and it has a couple options. First, you can reset this PC. What that does is you can completely reinstall Windows without needing an operating system disk to reinstall it. Or you can use it to where it will reinstall Windows either from the source that you have on your computer, or if it's really corrupted, it will actually go out to Microsoft, download and reinstall it. You can also do things such as fix problems using Windows Update. So it reinstalls your current version of Windows. Things that you have installed, your files, things like that are all going to be preserved and stay on your system. But it allows your system to reset, keep all your data, all of your things that you have, but it refreshes your, your system files and things. And then lastly, you can fix problems without resetting your PC. Now, honestly, I've never really had much success with this first one. You, typically, most of the time, I'm resetting the whole thing if I'm having a problem that the normal tools don't recover. Usually running tools such as DISM or SFC, which I talk about and show in another video, that usually fixes most of the most of the issues I run into. Outside of that, it's just not worth it to me to try and troubleshoot. Reset, move on, you know? It just takes less time, but maybe you don't wanna do that. But here's a few other things that you can do when it comes to recovery. Things that you can do to get ahead of that fix issue. So we'll just hit our start button again and it's called restore points. So you'll see here where it says create a restore point. And with restore points, what it gives you, as a matter of fact, they have this also in servers, it's called shadow copy files. But essentially what it does is it takes a snapshot of your Windows system and saves it into a small section on your hard drive. That way, if you need to restore, go back to a previous date, you could do that but it's something you have to turn on. If you don't have it on, it's not gonna be running. So here we could see that it's off on this computer right now. So if I configure it, I could turn on the system protection and I could say how much I want to use. So I can say, I only want you to use 10% of my drive, or maybe I want you to be able to use 50%. You know, the more space that you give this, the more it can store. So keep in mind when it comes to your hard drive space, take a look at that and see how much space you have on your computer before you set this, because you don't want to fill up your hard drive and then your machine can't recover because there's not enough space. It's always good to keep at least 20% free. In other words, you only want up to 80% usage on your hard drive. So if your hard drive is 100 gig, only go up to 80 gig. Any more, any more than that, you should be adding a secondary drive or deleting files off or both. So usually for most of my systems that I run and support, I usually go around 10% because that's a happy medium. It gives me a couple different restore points that I can easily go back to. And this button is dangerous here because this, you can delete all restore points. So the nice part about this button is if you do have this set, too high and you fill up your hard drive, you can go in here and delete and remove them all in one go. But ideally, it's just best to go ahead and set this at a safe number. We'll go ahead and cancel this for now. This is a VM. 
I don't need to use this because I use Hyper-V snapshots if I need to go back in time. But the nice part about that is when I reboot this computer using the recovery, I can decide which snapshot to go back to. Do I want to go back to a week? Do I want to go back to last time I installed something or before I installed something rather, or maybe even a time before that? Again, however much storage you give it will depend on how much a history you'll have available. The next thing, and this is more of a Windows 11 feature. If we start typing in that restore keyword again, you're going to see that restore your files with file history. Again, this uses your those shadow copies. Same thing. This is more of a Windows 11 feature. I think some version of Windows 10 had this as well, but I never really used it that much in Windows 10. I'm using it more in Windows 11, so that's kind of where I'm going off of. But you need a, another drive that you can use to be able to set this. And, and I recommend if you have like a local NAS at home, like a, a Synology NAS or QNAP or something like that, it makes it easy to create this file history. The nice part about this is it allows you to look at different versions of files and be able to restore those versions based on, you know, when those last changes were made and makes it easy to select any of those. We can say we want to exclude certain folders in here. We can go in, we can say what files we want to restore here. It'll, it'll pop up. We can also select the drive that we want to have, or in this case, since I only have one hard drive, I can add network location. That's where I'm talking about having a small NAS, or you can even use another Windows computer. In fact, to share out a drive on a Windows computer is very simple. You never want to share the entire drive, but I want to show you how to do this. That way you can start working with this shared, shared file history here. If you have a computer at home, what you can do is you can just create a new folder. We're just going to create one here in the root of C. I'll just call it shares, make it simple. And then here we're going to say, we want, we're going to call this file history. Now I can't use this on this computer because this is only one computer, but if I had another computer, this is how I would share it to it. You right click on it and you go to properties. And from here you go to the sharing tab and you can say to share this file and you say what your permissions are. Personally, I find the advanced sharing a whole lot easier. You have file history, go in here with permissions. Now right now, by default, it gives everyone read. That means anyone on the network, including people that don't even have logins, can see what's in this folder, read it and be able to download it. We don't want to do that. What if you want only you to be able to access these? Well, to make that happen, all you need to do is select what users you want to add into this folder and for the share permissions. Setting up your users, we'll also go in here and we want to go into other users and we can add an account. And here what we do is we add an account with the username and password. And then we add that account into here and then we give it change control. We don't want to give it full control because full control allows you to change permissions. We don't want you to do that. Just give it change control. Outside of that, then we also want under security, we want to change this settings for users and we will want to edit this and make sure that users that we create is part of the users group and they have modify access that allows those to create files. It also makes it easy for you to share files between each other. So as you tell, it's very, very simple to share and also create a centralized point for you to save those files. If you use a QNAP or Synology NAS, it's pretty much the same thing. You create a share, create a username, and then when you connect to that share using that username, you then make sure you use that correct password and you just connect and it starts working makes it nice and easy. What are some other recovery options that you have on your computer? Well, you do have things like ransomware protection that's built into Defender where you can have controlled folder access. I highly encourage you, if you don't have this turned on with your Defender, turn it on. Because what this does is it will block programs from writing in your computer that are vulnerable. 
such as your personal files and things. It'll still allow you to, but it will block things from accessing key areas. You can look at your protected folders right here and you can add more folders in here. So if you have one, like let's say, we wanna protect that folder that we just created, right? So we go here and we'll just do the whole shares folder. That means everything from C shares and down is now considered a protected folder and Defender will block anyone from any program from trying to encrypt these areas and ransomware acting on you. Defender is actually a fantastic endpoint product. And if you pair that with the paid for version, the free version is good, don't get me wrong. It's a good antivirus system, but if you pair that with something like Microsoft 365 home and family plan, or if you're a business, you need business premium because that gives you full Defender XDR, Defender for business. And that gives a lot more capabilities to Defender. It actually makes it one of the Defenders constantly in the top three of endpoint protection systems. And a lot of security companies actually, instead of building their own antivirus system, rely purely on Defender because it's that good. Defender will spot stuff before a lot of other products will too. But again, that's really just for the paid for version, not the free. The free version, some stuff are gonna get around it because it's just a basic antivirus that's looking for signatures. Whereas the more premium product is gonna be looking behavioral and, and other things. So anyway, that's enough about Defender. Let's get back into more ways that you can protect yourself in your system. Some of this is just good habits. Like if we go into our settings, we also have what's called under system. We want to go into storage here in our system settings and we want to make sure storage sense is turned on. Now storage sense is fantastic because it helps you manage the storage on your hard drive. Remember earlier when we were looking at the recovery selection? Well, here with Storage Sense, it allows us to set up and clean up our hard drive, remove things that we don't need. So for example, delete files in my downloads folder. You could say you want it to run every day. It'll just clean stuff out and delete it. If you want it a month or uh, two months out, you can change it right here or never delete anything. You can empty your recycle bin. By default, it's this is your typical settings where it doesn't run downloads folder. It waits 30 days on your recycle bin and it only runs during low disk space. I suggest you run this at least once a week. Set what you want on here and in here and let it go. Let it Just let it set and it'll take care of cleaning up a lot of those things. The last thing I'd suggest that you make sure you do is your Windows updates. A lot of people are scared of Windows updates, but these updates, while yes, they can cause some bugs and cause some issues, but the best thing and the healthiest thing you can do for your system, keep it up to date. There's always new, always new vulnerabilities coming out every single month, huge vulnerabilities. Because Windows is the most targeted operating system on the planet, because just about everybody uses it. So make sure you run and install these updates. Have those updates set to automatic where they install and make sure you do all this under your advanced options. Let me just show you this. So we can make sure we receive our updates for all Microsoft products. We wanna make sure that we stay up to date. We also want it to notify us and let us know, hey, we need to reboot our computer when it's done. And you can also say if there's any optional updates here that you install like drivers and stuff like that. So what did we cover? Well, first off, keep your system up to date. That's the most important thing I suggest you do. That'll help keep your system running healthy. Second, make sure you set up those recovery points. So if something does happen, you have a way to hit that reset button, go back in time when things were running nice and smoothly. Make sure if you have file history, go ahead, set it up. It's an easy way to keep your files safe. Lastly, make sure you remember to enable your Defender options. Make sure all of Defender is on. That way you're getting the most of its free protection or paid for protection if you have the family plan or, or another Microsoft 365 plan that gives you a license because 
that will help you protect your computer from a lot of uh, virus attacks and malicious software. And by doing all these things, you can help protect yourself online and keep your computer running much more safer and much more cleaner. We'll see you in the next video.